Hello, you. I feel like you can see so much of me right now. I feel all awkward. Normally I'm like cropped here. Hello, YouTube. I'm Andrew Does Hair. You can find my work on Instagram at Andrew Does Hair. Today I want to talk to you about how to photograph a fade. Now, I've done a video like this before, but the last time I did it, it was, it was a long time ago, and I did it as kind of an afterthought. I feel like I could do it better. So I'm going to make it a lot quicker, a lot simpler, and hopefully a lot more helpful this time around. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is first I'm going to tell you what you want to do, and then I'm going to tell you how it works and how to do it. So essentially what you're going to want to do to shoot a fade and make it look the best that it can look is remove all the shadows and have as little contrast as possible. It's that's it. It's as simple as that. You want to remove contrast in the lighting. You want to have everything really evenly lit and that's going to show off your fade the best way possible. So how do you do this? Well, to put it simply, look for a place to shoot where you don't have any shadows. The easiest way to do this is walk outside and go to the side of the building that is shaded. You know, the sun's on that side of the building, go to this side of the building and stand in the shade. Think about this. If you're standing in the shade, you don't have a shadow. And so if you shoot a fade in the shade, I feel like Dr. Seuss, then your fade won't have shadows. So that's the simplest, easiest way to do it is go outside and find a fully shaded area. You're going to have a great looking fade. Another way you can do this is to go find a window with indirect light. So this is not the sun coming straight in through that window and baking half the salon or the barbershop. This is when the sun's on the other side of the building, but indirect sun is coming in through a window. If you get your model over by that window and the closer the better, you can light a fade really, really easily with just natural light. So like these photos on the screen here were shot that way. Just open windows. And because of the nature of this light coming in through such a large window and being from an indirect source, it's coming from the sun, it's bouncing off the world around it, and then it's coming in through these big windows, it essentially acts as a larger light source, which gives you less contrast. We'll get into that. Another way you can get this nice even light is if it's a cloudy day. So the, the clouds will actually act as like a giant diffusion panel for the sun. And so if you go outside and there's gray skies, shoot your fades outside. Now you might be thinking, well, my salon or my barbershop is indirect light. You know, it's dark in there relative to outside. The sun's creeping in through windows. But if you got lights all over your salon and barbershop, as most do, those are going to kind of mess things up. So you can see in this room right now, I have these little can lights up here. These are bad. When you have a small light source, like these tiny little can lights or like the sun, I know the sun's giant, but it's so far away that it acts like a tiny little light source. When you have tiny little lights, what they do is they produce shiny spots on really anything they hit, and they produce really hard, crisp shadows. So when you're looking at a fade that's really, really nice, you see a, a very gradual graduation from light to dark, and it goes from skin to just darkness, very evenly and uniformly. If you have a light that's small like this, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna, every hair sticking off of the head is going to be creating its own little shadow, and it's gonna create this, this extra darkness there that isn't actually hair. And so even though the hair could be perfectly cut incrementally from shorter to longer, if the, the wrong kind of light is hitting it, you're going to be, you're gonna add shadows to the head that aren't actually hair, but will look like hair in a photograph. Another thing too with that small light is it makes everything somewhat shiny. So we call this specular highlights. Like if you ever shoot a picture with your phone and you have the flash on and it puts like a bright shiny spot on somebody's forehead, that's a specular highlight. It makes every, microscopic imperfection just glare. So here I'm going to shoot with my, uh, this is a Canon EOS R with a 50 millimeter f1.8 lens, pretty middle of the road, straightforward, basic camera setup. I'm shooting with it fully auto. So the rest of the demos throughout this video, I'm not doing any tricks or editing or, or secret sauce in here. Everything we're going to see is just going to be the difference in the lighting. The camera is just fully auto right now. So if I shoot this head using the available light in the room, we're going to see on the forehead, that shiny spot that I talked about. Anytime you have small lights, shiny spots. The sun, shiny spots. If we were to zoom into the actual hair here, you can see up around the corner of the head, you can see shadows being cast from the hairs. And on top of it, you can see some shine in the part there. And so we're not having good contrast in a good way. The fade looks somewhat flat. It's not like popping, you know? Um, and, and what we're doing with this light is just horribly emphasizing every imperfection in my haircut here. So what I've done, at least in this room, to mitigate this situation, these kind of shiny hard lights, is I put up these lights around here. And I actually have a video all about that in the, I'll, I'll put a link in the description, 
But essentially, long story short, these lights are bouncing out of the corners of the room. And then the only light that's filling the room is being bounced out of those corners of the room. So it's indirect light, like we were talking about earlier from the sun bouncing off the world and then coming in through a window. This light is bouncing off of my walls and my ceiling and then onto the model. So if I kill the ugly house lights and I put up these slightly better lights, we're going to see something drastically different here. Now that we're working with a bit of diffused light, now we're not going to see shiny spots on the skin. Comparing the two, the, the skin looks way more even, way softer, way smoother. And the fade, uh, let's look at the difference there. Well, the fade's a little bit better. If we were to zoom in on this second picture here, there's still some shadows on there. This is not absolutely perfect, but you can see pretty clearly the uh, dramatic difference there in the amount of contrast on the head. We're still gonna do some more stuff to make this even a little better. Another great way that you can erase shadows is with a reflector. Now this reflector is like $20 at any photography store. It's essentially foil wrapped around a wire frame. So it folds up, you can keep it in your station. And what you'll do with this reflector is you're gonna take it and tilt it in a way that it's gonna throw light up onto the bottom of the fade. This is called a fill light. This is the, the purpose of this light in this case is called a fill light. It's filling shadows on the bottom side of the head. Now I see some barbers and hairstylists use a second light to do this and you could totally do that, but you have to be really, really careful to make sure that your second light, your fill light is not brighter than the lights up above. Otherwise you create shadows on the top side of the head and you have the same problem you had before. It looks fake, it looks weird. This reflector is gonna throw just enough light back up here to make the bottom of the fade really, really glow and to make those shadows in this kind of transition area start to fade out a little more nicely. So when we compare the no reflector photo to the reflector photo, I think we can agree that if you're a barber and you're taking pictures of haircuts for Instagram, this is the best $20 you can spend that drastically changes what the fade looks like. Again, we're filling some shadows here to reduce the uh, contrast caused by the shadows created from the light up above. So our, our key lights up there create shadows. Our fill light fills in those shadows and the result is a much smoother transition area here. So really quick, really easy way to do all this, pull out a reflector. That's gonna solve half your problems. Get a larger light source. That's gonna solve another half of your problems. If you're using or planning on using studio lights of any type for this kind of photo here, name of the game is bigger. Just the biggest you can handle, the biggest you can afford, the biggest you can fit in your space. This isn't exactly practical for most salons and barbershops, but if you want like a holy crap, that fade is photoshopped photograph of a fade, Giant softbox, the bigger the better. Because my light source is so much bigger than the model, each of those little individual hairs is not gonna catch a highlight the way that it was when I had the house lights on. It's gonna look incredibly smooth and incredibly even between this light and this light. In fact, if I kill these house lights, I can take a little bit more shine off of the face here. Which plug was it? Wrong one. Oh, it's pretty dark in here now. Looking at that most recent photo with the giant light and the reflector, and I killed all the house lights here, we've got like perfectly smooth skin. We've got no highlights on those little hairs. You can't see the texture on each hair. If, if you compare this to the first photo we took, that one is just riddled with shadows. It's riddled with little highlights on each individual hair has a highlight, so you can see the texture too much. And just to put it all back in a nutshell here, if you wanna take a better picture of a fade, Shoot somewhere where you don't have shadows. If you can't find a place like that, make a place like that. No shadows here, but there's no shadows in the fade. Thanks for watching. If this was helpful, please uh, like and subscribe and tell a friend. Thank you.